Hello, my miraculous friend, and welcome to another episode of the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. This is Reverend Francis Faden, and I'm so grateful that we get to spend this time together today. I'd like to start by taking a few deep breaths together just to get ourselves grounded and centered and really ready for this inspiration today. Breathing in the energy of expansion, breathing out anything you no longer need. If you are driving, please keep your eyes open, but you can still bring your awareness to your breath. And just allow yourself to feel that divine presence supporting you, loving you. As soon as we slow down just a little bit, we can, boom, feel that energy coming right in. We become aware of how loved and supported we are, which is one of the biggest miracles of all. And knowing that whatever you're supposed to hear today that's going to help you to magnify your miracles, it's going to be exactly what you are going to hear. So let's take a few deep breaths together. In gratitude, we can begin. All right, my friend. Well, welcome again to the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. It has been so lovely to hear your comments and read your emails about what it's been like for you to be listening to the podcast, to be going through your own money story, as many of you have gone through the four-part money series. And I love hearing from you. So Anytime you have a question or a comment or a suggestion, please let me know because I love creating this podcast for you and I love knowing that it is making a difference in your life. Today, I want to talk about something that's really important that I have a very different perspective on and it's resistance. Yes. (laughs) And I'm sure if you're like me, you've dealt with a lot of resistance, a lot of internal resistance when you're trying to make change. And often when I'm working with my own clients, I will see that they will tell me what they would love to experience in their lives and what they would love to, you know, create and manifest and how they want to have miracles manifest for them. But then when they go to implement some of the changes that they might need to make, they feel a huge wall of resistance on the inside. Now, there's two things I'm going to tell you about this. And again, I'm going to tell you that my take on this is very different than what you're going to hear out there in the world of personal development which in some cases i actually find the advice out there about overcoming resistance to be dangerous yes i'm going to say that word i find it to be dangerous so the first thing we want to know is what is that resistance and where is it coming from so there's a couple different kinds Um, One is just you're going along in your life, you're kind of on autopilot, and now you're trying to make a change, and you have the resistance of your subconscious mind saying, this is different, I don't like it, why am I doing it this way? So simple things that you can do. Let's say when you go out for a walk, you always put on your right shoe, and then you put on your left shoe. Well, for a few days, try putting on your left shoe first and then put on your right shoe. And what you'll feel is it's gonna feel weird. You'll be like, why am I doing this? This feels so strange. Because your mind and your subconscious mind wanna stay in a groove of what's familiar. They want you to have the path of least resistance. So it's gonna feel strange. Now that's one kind of resistance of just you know breaking a pattern. But what if the pattern that you're wanting to break is a negative pattern that isn't really helping you. In fact, it's hurting you but you still run into some of that resistance. So that could be maybe you have a tendency to be overeating, or maybe you have a tendency to spend more money than what you have available, or something that has definitely a negative consequence to it. And you go to make the change, you sign up to go to the gym so that you can lose some weight, you order a bunch of, you know, supplements or something like that. So you can be on a health regimen or, you know, whatever it might be. We all do whatever we think is going to help us. And then what happens is we sign up for the gym and then we go for maybe a week, maybe a couple of weeks, maybe in a couple of months, and then we stop going. And what's happening is your subconscious mind is, is like, it's letting you do it to a certain point. And then as soon as it starts to see that you're making change and it's real change and your subconscious mind knows you very well, it might let you slide for a couple of weeks and go, ah, 
she's done this before. She'll go to the gym for a little while. She'll take that yoga class for a couple of weeks and then wham, after it starts to see you making a lot of change and it knows that you're serious about it, it starts to go, hold on, hold on. Now, the reason that it's doing that is not because it's trying to hurt you. It's actually trying to keep you safe. It perceives change as something negative. It's telling you, whoa, ho, ho, what's gonna happen if we lose this weight? And very often there's something that we're afraid of, like maybe we're afraid of getting uh, attention. You know, if we suddenly find ourselves, um, whatever we think losing weight's gonna do, I'm not gonna tell you that I think losing weight is the thing that will or won't get you attention because I've seen all kinds of people and when their mindset's in the right place, they get attention no matter what's going on in their outside world. So it really is an inner mindset thing, but the subconscious mind is gonna tell you that this is scary and that this is not okay and that you need to stop. And then suddenly you'll either not wanna get off the sofa or you might have a life circumstance happen like, oh, I twisted my ankle or, oh, I pulled my hamstring and now I can't go to the gym for at least a few weeks maybe even six weeks. And then what happens? Six weeks comes and goes and you get out of the habit of going to the gym and you stay in your safe zone. Now, these are all things that are that you probably know. These are things that you've probably heard about before, but there's another kind of resistance that happens to people who are on the spiritual path. And this is the kind that I wanna talk to you about. And in fact, what I'm gonna tell you about how to handle this resistance or how to approach it will apply to these other types of resistance as well. So maybe you read somewhere in a book that you should be going out there and you know promoting your you're a light worker, get out there and you know promote yourself and do everything you can. And but something on the inside doesn't feel good about that. Something on the inside is like, hmm. I don't really want to go to this networking event. I don't really like it just just doesn't feel right to you. Or maybe you're wanting to, um, you know, achieve a particular goal. And somebody said, if you write something down 100 times a day, that you'll get to that goal faster. And you go to write it down and like, and your heart's not in it. And you're just like, mm, not quite. Well, here's the thing. When you're on the spiritual path, I'm assuming, it might not be true for you, but I'm assuming when you're on the spiritual path, you've probably prayed about these changes. You've probably asked spirit to help guide you, right? So if you're like me, you might say, Divine Mother, you know, I'm really looking to grow my business or I'm really looking to, um, you know, improve my health, lose some weight, whatever it might be. I'm really, I'm like, I'm just really, I'm asking for your guidance show me the way to grow my business. Show me the way to do that. Show me the way to bring in more money or whatever, whatever it might be, but you're praying about it and you're asking about it. Resistance is sometimes guidance. I want you to write that down. Resistance is sometimes guidance. When you're on the spiritual path, because your own higher self is trying to let you know that doesn't fit, that doesn't feel right. Something about that isn't gonna work for you. Now I'm gonna give you a story from my own life that um, helped me with this whole thing of understanding resistance and how I work with my own clients and I help my own clients work through their resistance. The first thing I say is don't resist your resistance. Now, this is very different than if you go to like a Tony Robbins seminar or some other self-help guru. It's a very masculine approach of like, you got to smash your resistance. You got to overcome it. You got to push, push, push. And I'll tell you, my friends, what I have seen is that that can be dangerous. You can override it. Absolutely. But what if what you're overriding is your guidance? Have you ever thought about that? Now, that might not be true for the average person who... Maybe they're a couch potato and they never do anything and they're never motivated by anything and they're not praying and they're not asking for guidance. Then maybe that couch potato might need that kick in the butt that they can get in one of those kind of seminars. But if you're a highly sensitive person, highly creative person, light worker, spiritual entrepreneur, like I'm assuming all of you are, 
and you're praying and you're practicing and you're doing a lot of the things that I share with you in this podcast, then you want to have a different relationship with that res- that uh, resistance. I call it respecting your resistance. We don't want to just plow over it. And in fact, you know, I've read a lot of the biographies of very successful business people throughout the years. And there's a very common theme with a lot of these male business tycoons, ones that became millionaires back in the day when people were making like, you know, 50 cents an hour or something like that, back in the 20s and the 30s and all that, a lot of them, they would go and they would push and they would get through it and they'd make all this money and then they would lose it. Why? Because they ignored whatever was going on inside of them, whether it was higher guidance or it was their own fears or whatever it might be, they pushed. And what they did is they pushed it down and it had to come back up. So even though they made all this money, their self-esteem still didn't match, their belief system still didn't match. And so they had it and then they lost it. And then what happens is they learn that, oh, maybe that method isn't the best method they go back within and they deal with what's going on on the inside and then they make it all over again because now they they know they have the confidence that they can make that money and they've healed what they need to heal and then they become millionaires and they get to keep that money now interestingly enough you know who that did not happen to our good friend or i as i like to call her my imaginary friend my imaginary friend oprah winfrey what's different about oprah winfrey oprah went through her process in front of everybody. Oprah did not push and override and pretend that she was anything other than who she was. And we even saw it in her weight loss journey. Whenever she would try to force herself to lose weight, she'd lose it and then boom, that energy would come back. And it wasn't until she really got clear with herself that it wasn't about weight loss, it was about self-love and she needed to really love herself that her weight started to stabilize and she came down to more of what I think is probably her normal body weight. But she is not a person who lost all of her money or lost anything in a scandal or anything like that because she was dealing with her stuff as it was happening. And if you're a fan of hers, like I am, you've been watching it for all these years, Oprah lives her life you know, out in the open. And I personally believe that she is a highly sensitive person probably an empath that probably has influenced her a lot, but she has never gone through that process of squishing it, overriding it and making it happen. So she never had that dip happen. This is really important. So I'm gonna share my story with you and then I'm gonna give you some tips about what you can do. I had this long list of things that I should be doing, right? And there's your first word should. If you find yourself with a long list of shoulds, be careful and be mindful because it's probably not coming. Shoulds don't come from spirit. They come from our ego. They come from our mind. I should do this and I should do that. Well, what do you really want to do? You know, what you really want to do, what's true for you comes from your heart. It comes from spirit. It comes from guidance. So that's the first thing you want to check in when you're having a lot of resistance is Am I trying to make myself do something that's just one big should? And it's not actually a truth. I'm doing it because somebody said I should do it. And they said, oh, this should help you grow your business. This should help you heal your marriage. This should help you with your health. But I want to do it because it doesn't feel true for me. So I had this big long list and everything that was on my list was amazing. I had like mantras to be chanting and I had meditations I could be doing and I had books to read and I don't remember what I was doing at the time, but I was trying to make some kind of big change. And I really wanted this change. And I was just like, oh, I gotta do all these things, gotta make it happen, make it happen. And day after day would go by and I wouldn't do it. And I would beat myself up and be like, oh, why aren't you doing this? Like, if you just do this, the miracle is on the other side of this list of shoulds. Don't you know that? That's what my mind would tell me. The miracles on the other side of these shoulds, you got to do these things. Get in that vortex, make it happen. And my energy wasn't there. I was just like, now I've used all of those tools before in the past with great success. But at that time, I just kept coming up against a wall of resistance. It's like, yeah, I don't want to do it. So I was journaling 
And I, this is one of my favorite things to do is to journal. And I wrote in my journal, I address my own higher self. And that's how I talk in my journal. And I said, you know, dear higher self, I have this list of things that will help me to experience these things that I've been asking for, and yet I won't do it. So immediately I'm thinking like, oh, maybe I don't really want those things and I'm self-sabotaging and all that kind of thing. So I went down that road. And I wrote down this sentence, you know, these things are my medicine. It's what's gonna make it better. Why won't I take my medicine? And then swear to God, I heard a voice in my head say to me, maybe that's not your medicine. Whoa. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, maybe that's not my medicine. What is my medicine <laughs> became the thing in my head because I was listening to everybody else. I wasn't listening to my higher self. I've been praying about it. And then I got really quiet and I said, okay, then show me what is my medicine. And what I got was, it was nothing wrong with that list of things. But what I got was for me at that time, it was about first things first and surrendering and letting Divine Mother help me at that time, not making it happen. But I needed to focus a little bit more on rest and I needed to focus a little bit more on feeling good on a daily basis and enjoying myself. And that's what got me into that vortex more than making it happen. And ever since then, I've been very mindful of resistance and I have a lot of respect for it. So now when I feel resistance, I don't just tell myself, ah, oh, you gotta make yourself do it. I mean, you know, every now and then there are things that you do need to do. Like, I do not like, you know, getting the information to my accountant for my taxes. And sometimes I procrastinate on that and I'm very aware of it. And I send it and I have to make myself do it. But I'm not talking about those kinds of things. I'm talking about when you are really wanting to make a change in your life and you're just coming up against that resistance. I'm gonna invite you, my friend, to make friends with your resistance. Don't push through it. Get curious about it. This is one of the reasons why it's great to work with somebody. And this is why I love working with my own clients. Or even if you have a friend that you can work with who's not gonna try to give you the answer and kind of you know advise you. But this is the power of having somebody to be in that space with you. So often when I'm working with my clients, they'll send me their notes for the week and they'll they, they write down everything they didn't do. Oh, I didn't do this and I didn't get to this and I feel so bad because I didn't do this and I didn't do this. And I'm like, well, what did you do? What? And they're like, what? Like they expect to get in trouble. I'm like, well, what did you do? You showed up for your appointment today. So let's celebrate that. And I shift the energy from that punishing voice in their mind to one of celebrating the fact that they're coming into a new thing and doing something differently. And then I said, well, if you didn't do these things, what did you do with your time? And they say, oh, well, I went for a walk. I was with my dog. I talked to my mom. I'm like, what if that's what you needed to do? And they look at me with like, what? A blank stare like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, well, what if that was what your soul actually needed that day? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you to just always be avoiding everything because if you do avoid everything, there's something going on there too. And that's where you need to be honest with yourself of, do you even want this thing that you say that you want? Because I'm a big proponent of, if you don't, let it go and free up your energy. But you're not gonna get clear about it unless you let yourself stop judging it and stop trying to make yourself do it. Be an observer for a little while. And when that resistance comes up, if you've prayed about something and you've asked for guidance, always make sure that you're doing that. And then you, you still feel that resistance, pay attention and ask, so what's trying to happen here? What's going on with this resistance? You can even write to the resistance and say, okay, resistance, I see you, I hear you. What is it that you want me to know? Why don't you want to do this thing that's supposed to be good for me? What is it that you need? And this is a great question. What is it that you need to feel safe? This, my friend, is the kinder way to deal with resistance. Because if we meet resistance with resistance and we force ourselves, 
we just end up creating a lot of internal friction, a lot of conflict. And while we may achieve one thing, it might come at the expense of something else. And I just don't believe in that. I believe that you're already wired for your success. I believe that your miracle is already here, my friend. And this is how I work with my own clients is I will share with them and say, what if we paid attention to that resistance rather than being mad at it? What is it trying to tell us? Maybe it's your soul talking to you and saying, I'm tired. I don't want to do it like this anymore. I want to do a different thing. So I'm going to encourage you, my friend, to be patient with yourself. And when resistance comes up, get curious. Kind of put on your coach's hat, like I'm doing with you today. Put on your coach's hat and say, hmm, I'm wondering why I'm doing this. I wonder why I'm waiting to the last minute to get this you know, report to my boss. What part of me likes stress? What part of me wants to live on the edge? Do I want to live on the edge? Is that what's going on with me? So be careful not to assume anything when you have these things going on. But, you know, we're the creators of our reality. And so one of the best things you can do is observe and observe yourself and be like, hmm, I wonder why I would do that. What part of me is really acting right now? Is it my higher self? Or is it my subconscious mind? Let's find out. So when you have resistance, my friend, make friends with your resistance. Don't resist resistance is the best thing I can say. Go deep into it and find out what is it trying to tell you? There's a gift here. And for all you know, your miracle might be right on the other side of what that resistance is trying to show you. It might be about surrender. It might be about letting go and not pushing through. I'd love to hear from you what your thoughts are about resistance. And if you do, encounter it a lot of times that masculine way it works for some people it doesn't usually work for highly spiritual highly sensitive people who are on a spiritual path it's usually not so helpful resistance again is can be part of your feedback system it can be part of your higher guidance all right my friend well that's what i wanted to share with you today i'd love to know your thoughts about it you can leave me a comment and let me know what you think and if you've had any of your own experience with resistance both trying to overcome it and then allowing it and you know having it melt away because that's what happens for me is when i when i let it be there and i put some loving attention on it it melts and then what really needs to come up is usually what comes up and then i see i'm like oh this is what it's about it's about this it's amazing if you did enjoy this podcast episode, I would be so appreciative if you would uh, leave a review wherever you have your podcasts on Apple Podcasts or wherever it might be. If you could tell your friends about it, if you could share it on social media, anything that you could do to help spread the light, I would be so, so grateful. It makes a really big difference to me. Thank you so, so much. And remember, my friend, that the secret to magnifying your miracles and one of them is to remember that your miracle is already here. Take care, my friend. Bye-bye.